Rice, bread, especially bread and vegetables have skyrocketed. Many Nigerians are struggling to make ends meet. When was the last time you had a cup of tea with some slices of bread or a loaf of bread? Hmm. Please don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I actually uh, bought a loaf of bread. I mean, this very small one at the rate of 1,000 naira. Mm -hmm. mm, that's true. And so, food, all types of food items are becoming a major issue of concern, not just for people, uh, Jume and I and other households, but also for the government. Now, with the National Bureau of Statistics reporting an increase in the consumer price index now that is really really alarming it's, yeah it's really alarming and um, and the government is actually aware of it and trying as much as they can, they can. to sort of cushion the effect you know uh, since president chinibu assumed, assumed office. office he declared a state of emergency on food insecurity now which is a critical aspect of any nation's development to move forward. Indeed, and on Monday, uh, last Monday, I should say, uh, during the Federal Executive Council meeting, the federal government you know, appealed to state governments to ensure effective distribution of the latest set of rice uh, palliatives, uh, totaling 740 trucks of rice, uh, which we hear is now in the possession of state governments. And of course, um, you know, that uh, state government should also pay attention uh, to food shortage across the country and ensure that uh, the distribution is equitable and transparent. Yes, that's what we'll be looking at, some of the challenges and prospects of ensuring that the most vulnerable get access to these food items. Mm. And that's Good Morning Nigeria for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Jumwe yourself. And again, the government's rice distribution program aims to boost food security, support local farmers, reduce the country's reliance on imports. But there are questions to ask, as uh, we've always, you know, put across on this program. How effective, you know, uh, will this particular program be? Have we learned our lessons from previous experiences? And what might be the challenges? So... Let me pause a while, welcome you properly. I am Claire Adela Wabdurazak. As always, uh, Jume and I are inviting you to get high on only, the program today. <laughs> only on Good Morning Nigeria. And this is the fourth mm. for the week. Jume. That's not all, Claire. You know, mm. we have another conversation in the second part of the program, which is on digital trade, the renewed hope strategy. Mm. Like I said earlier, I am Juma Yusuf. You haven't changed. Yes, and you're welcome <laughs> to the program. In the course of the program, Chukudi Okolo Baja will be joining us at some point for the newspaper review. But let's get the highlights of the news from Dennis Adegulowe. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, uh, Jume and Claire. When was the last time you bought bread? And <laughs> I, bought, I, I bought bread yesterday and I was just overwhelmed with how much bread is now costing. But we mm. certainly look forward to when things will speedily improve. Indeed. Yes. All right, so good morning, Nigeria. Here is the morning news. It's in aligning with the federal government's ambition of providing appropriate Remuneration for workers. The Senate has granted expeditious consideration to the 2024 Appropriation Act Amendment Bill transmitted by President Bola Tinubu. The amendments are to provide funding for the national minimum wage and key renewed hope capital projects committed, omitted rather, in the 2024 budget. For renewed hope infrastructure projects, and other critical infrastructure projects to be undertaken across the country. All the proposals in this bill are laudable and will enhance the critical needs of the citizens of our dear country. Meanwhile, the executive bill seeking to amend the 2024 Appropriation Act has scaled second reading at the House of Representatives. The bill contains President Tinubu's request for the House to approve 6.2 trillion naira from the Consolidated Revenue Fund for capital and recurrent expenditure in the 2024 fiscal year. This is not supplementary actually, it's called budget adjustments. 
So existing 2024 budget we are going to consider and amend so that um, those important critical projects can be executed. The much-expected students' loan scheme has taken off with President Balatinubu's launching of the Nigeria Education Loan Fund portal. At the launching, President Tinubu emphasized that his administration will continue to invest in education as the catalyst for general socio-economic development. Without education, there is no development. Without education, you cannot even successfully conquer poverty, insecurity, and abuse in the society. Education is that light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how sluggish it moves, it will give you the light and the hope necessary to live a life. And we are investing in it. We don't want to try ignorance as alternative. We want education from foundation to the topmost level. And the federal government has instructed the Ministry of Solid Minerals Development to only issue mining licenses on the basis of local value addition. Vice President Kashim Shatima gave the directive at the opening of the African Natural Resources and Energy Investment Summit in Abuja. We recognize the losses incurred from exporting crude mineral commodities and understand that it is the time to change this narrative. By doing so, we aim to ensure that our team and youth are actively engaged in economic activities acquiring skills and contributing to the nation's foreign exchange earnings. President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of D.D. Esther Walson jack as the head of the Civil Service of the Federation with effect from August 14th. Walson jack was appointed as Federal Permanent Secretary in 2017 and has served in several ministries. The new appointee will take over from the incumbent head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Dr. Folashade Yemieso, who is due to retire on August 13th. President Inubu, while thanking the outgoing head of service for her stewardship, tasks the incoming head of service to discharge her duties with innovative flair, integrity and stringent adherence to the extant rules and regulations of the Civil Service of the Federation. And those are the highlights for the news at this time. Good morning, Nigeria continues with Claire and Jume after this break. Please don't go away.